Did the NFL do the Cowboys a favor and give them a favorable schedule this year? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. I am your host Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Lana McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we are not discussing the terrible news that Sean McEwen has signed with the Detroit Lions. On your wanted, birthday, no less. I know, on, on my birthday. I just, the heartbroken. It's okay. Heartbroken. Uh, instead, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Cowboys schedule, which was announced on Wednesday night. And just off the top, I've got three big takeaways, yeah. but just off the top, I've got to say, seems like a pretty favorable schedule, Landon. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at it from the, the the point of view that, you know, we knew who the opponents were, right? Like that part wasn't going to be revealed to us. So knowing that we had this, the, the thing that makes the schedule tough is the the opponents that you have to play. You're playing the AFC North, which is a very difficult sched, uh, team this year. They're part of the rotation. You have, you know, uh, a high seed uh, schedule. So it's, it's you're going to play the, the high seeds and, and the other teams that you play. So that part, you know, was difficult when we kind of just learned the names, right? But as far as like the, the the information that was revealed, you know, just this last few days, the sequencing really does help the Cowboys a lot, right? And and I think you know, let's jump right into it. Uh, you know, the Cowboys knew that they were going to have to play two AFC North road games, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that they got both of those out of the way before October 7th being the last one. If, if, if those of you watching on YouTube can see when we play the Steelers uh, to, to get that, both of those games done before the early part of October is a huge benefit, right? You, you're not having to go to Cleveland in December. You're not having to play in Pittsburgh in, in, uh, in January or December, you know, it's, it's, it to get, not have to play in the terrible weather that you can uh, get with a lot of those uh, games, I think was a huge benefit. And then on top of that, I also think that, you know, getting three of those four AFC North games in the first month of the season is also beneficial because those are all three pretty good AFC North teams with good rosters. And I just have, I'm of the belief that the first season, the first month of the season is still just chaos, right? Like Absolutely. teams still haven't figured things out. It's still kind of a, a, a holdover of the, the lack of preseason and the way that we've kind of, you know, reduced preseason. It just seems like the first month of the NFL season is still kind of, you know, wild, wild West. And I think that that plays into the Cowboys hands playing against three difficult, non-common AFC opponents. Uh, it just yeah. kind of makes things a little bit smoother when you, when you know that you're going to have to play Cleveland, Baltimore and Pittsburgh at some point in the season, I think playing him early, uh, and getting those road games out of the road is a huge win for the Cowboys. Yeah, and a couple more things. Again, if you're watching with us on YouTube, you can see the graphics. Playing in Pittsburgh and Cleveland are totally different than playing in Cincinnati and Baltimore. I mean, now Baltimore and Cincinnati get some bad weather games, but they yeah. don't get the 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 wind mm-hmm. that Cleveland and Pittsburgh get. And you're just not going to have that in September on September 8th, the opener, yeah. and then October 6th. And you might get some rain. It might be in the 50s or whatever. But compared to like playing a game, was it in 2008? The Cowboys played Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh yeah. and the wind chill was in the negatives. Like everybody remembers that game, right? Like it's just totally different. The other part of this, I want to go back to the schedule is the other possible cold weather games, the Giants, you know, in New York, that is September 26th. And then Washington, you play uh, on November 24th. That's a little colder, but not terrible, right? Yeah. They, they finished the season playing at home against Washington. The only game on the schedule that has a chance to be a cold weather game will be week 17 against the Philadelphia Eagles on December 29th and a game that could decide the division. That's it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zag a little bit here. 
right? Okay. I kind of wanted the Cowboys to play some cold, more cold weather games. Um, we talked about this last year, like how they're just, they kind of weren't tough enough to go play in Buffalo late in the season and play some of these games where you have to win when the, the elements aren't perfect. It does bum me out a little bit that we don't get to see them challenged a little bit more because let's say they are a wild card team and they have to go play in Lambo in middle of January. They're not going to be ready for that test at all. And that's the one do- downside of the schedule is it's very favorable for the regular season. I wonder if it might end up hurting them in the playoffs. Yeah. And I mean, again, and, and ultimately we've talked about it, like that's where our goals are set, you know, so it's not so much getting the playoffs as much as performing in the playoffs. And, you know, I, I do think it's nice to get that kind of at least one cold, potential cold weather game one. road game, you know, yep. before you get into the playoffs and may have to play a couple of those. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's really the the kind of only major downside to not having uh, several of these kind of of uh, road weather games is that you just don't get prepped for it. And there's not really a way to prep for it, you know, when you're practicing in Texas. Yeah, and you're practicing inside or if you're outside, it's warm. I mean, again, I think this sets up very well for the Cowboys to be successful in the regular season. But I do want them to kind of identify or have a physical element to their team. And I'm not sure how you get it without going on the road and playing in some bad weather games. Like, I I don't know. I mean, I would love his suggestion. I'm just curious. How do you develop a toughness if you don't have to ever go out and show it? Well, you know, and the truth of the matter is, is that there is also the opportunity that you may not need, you may not have to avail yourself of it because there's a chance that the road goes through, you know, San Francisco or, or Tampa or, and you don't have to play in a cold weather game. You still have to play a potentially very tough road, you know, physical game. Uh, But yeah, there is, there is a path in which the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl and don't play a, a bad cold weather game, but yeah, I think it, you know, again, to our larger point, I think it's important to kind of be battle tested and be proven in case yep. you do have to go into those kind of games. You have the confidence that you've won those type of games before. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just a, if anything, if they don't get the opportunity uh, in the regular season, then it's just something that they'll have to overcome in the game. And that's just yep. the reality of it. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about some other interesting things with the Cowboys 2024 schedule including a different switch up after Thanksgiving that we are used to seeing. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by game time with killer last minute deals, all in prices views from your seat in their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets. And now that the schedule has been announced, You can go buy your Cowboy tickets and get ready for the upcoming season. It's what I use whenever I decide to go to NFL games. You can save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. And you can save even more when you choose a section and you let Game Time choose the seats. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem promo code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Lana, let's talk more about the schedule. What stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, the another thing that kind of stands out to me is that the Cowboys are playing two Thursday night uh, games against the Giants, including the Thanksgiving game. And, and then on top of that, to get a divisional game on that Sunday before Thanksgiving. I, I can't remember the last time that's happened, right? Where you have a divisional game the Sunday before a Thanksgiving game and then another divisional game on Thanksgiving. 
you know, we've seen a lot of these kind of turnarounds and a lot of different combinations of these different things. Uh, but that one really does kind of stand out as unique. And, you know, it's the Giants and the Commanders. I think the Commanders are going to be a better football team this this year, and the, we'll see about the Giants. But it, you know, it still seems like that's that's a that's a high risk scenario for the Cowboys. You know, that's that's a lot of playoff uh, uh, percentages being moved in in a matter of four days. So I I I, I thought that that was something that was really interesting. Uh, for me, yes, that's a big one. Going from division game to a division game. But we're used to the Cowboys playing on Thanksgiving at home sure. and then turning right around and playing another Thursday game right after it. So seven yeah. days later, not only is that not the case this year, they actually have an 11 day break from the right. Thursday Thanksgiving game to the Monday night game against the Bengals. And that is a long break. And the good thing is you're not having to travel at all. I, it's I mean, they should be incredibly well rested kind of coming into that Bengals game, even though it, it, they're playing what well, they're playing at home against Philly Monday night against Houston, six days rest to play the commanders and then four day rest to play the giants. I think they're going to really need those 11 days to kind of recoup from that brutal part of the schedule. I also want to point out that they have a week seven bye. that's a little bit later than what they had the last couple of years. Wish it was maybe a, a single week later, but you do the, having that kind of quote unquote second buy will be yeah. nice for them. Yeah, I agree. It, it, that, that little miniature buy that you get because of the Monday night game after the Thursday night game, uh, it, it really, especially late in the season like that, I think could really benefit the Cowboys. And, and especially because it's at the end of a brutal stretch. I mean, you just showed it's Philly, Houston, Washington, you know, then four days later, you play the Giants. Uh, and then, you know, to have to play a, a team in Cincinnati Bengals that are going to be, you know, in the mix of, of the of the Super Bowl as well. So uh, it's a lot of really good teams. Uh, and then then you're playing two teams that aren't maybe as good as the others, but you're playing them so close together and their divisional game. So, like, it's even more heightened than, than a lot of these other games. So, yeah, it, that 11 day break is definitely going to come at a really key point in the schedule for the Cowboys, in, in which they're you know going to really enjoy and be grateful for that kind of mini mini break uh, uh, at the latter half of the season. Of the first six games of the season before the Cowboys buy, which game do you think will be the hardest for them? The Lions, uh, because the Lions are, I think, are you know angry <laughs> like you know lions fans in the team and haven't forgotten the way that things went down last season and i you know honestly after the way that the game ended last year i i had already kind of mentally circled this game this year uh because i knew that that the lions were going to want to come back and get uh, uh try to get some of their revenge so i think the lions are a good team i think these uh, you know look browns uh ravens steelers lions are all very very good teams that could, are going to be tough wins uh, I think that the Steelers game on the road will be tough. I think the Cleveland game has its has a, some matchup issues, but I think the Lions are motivated in a way those other teams aren't, uh, and they're a divisional team, and they're one of the best divisional teams. I, I think that's going to be a really tough game. I think for me, I'm getting we're looking at this the Cowboys schedule. If you're watching with us on YouTube, uh, we're going to find out real quick how much better or worse the Cowboys run defense is playing Cleveland. In yeah. week one, and then the Ravens in week three. I mean, the Cowboys have just really struggled uh, playing any type of team like the Ravens. It was 2020. Uh, I'm sure you remember the game against Lamar yep. Jackson where he yep. went absolutely wild. Yep. And you're going to have a healthy and rested and motivated Derrick Henry. Like, I think in the first six weeks of the season, we should also mention Pittsburgh has really invested a lot of assets into their run game. Yeah, uh, they they have Arthur Smith as their new OC. The Lions can really run the ball, and then right after the bye, you get the 49ers. Like, we're gonna find out really quickly how much of an impact Mike Zimmer can have on their run defense. Yeah, and and honestly, that's it's funny that you say that because I think the other thing we're gonna find out really quickly about is how well the offensive line overhauled went. You know, you, you look at you, we talked about the Cleveland game, but you know, New Orleans has got a couple guys, including mm -hmm. Cam Jordan. Uh, Baltimore obviously is Baltimore. You know, they have players deep at all those different spots. The Giants are gonna have Dexter Lawrence and an improved uh, the Brian the Burns. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and, and Burns. That's right. They added Burns. You know, so. Uh, and then obviously the Steelers have maybe the best pass rushing duo in football, right? So, 
Uh, it's it's but the third you're best gonna, pass rusher delay. Just want to get that out there. The the okay, fans. <laughs> but make sure we, I get that. Nice yeah, okay. yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, Clear, the Pittsburgh fans love it when I put Michael Parsons out a lot. Just, just what I really do. I, I feel sure great. they're huge fans of that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the point being, and then Detroit, obviously as well, right? Like they're yeah. they're gonna have some. They have some dudes as well. So I think that the, we're gonna learn a lot about how well this team revamped their run defense. But I also think we're gonna learn a lot early about how well this team revamped their offensive line with the young players that they've added uh, through the draft. Yeah. Um, of of those of the all the games on the schedule i'm gonna put that schedule back up yeah what is the one game that you are the most excited to watch this is really weird i have to say but i'm really excited to see that houston texans cowboys game uh, you know i, I grew up you know for for folks that are old heads like me right that remember the old houston oilers and i remember you know the governor's cup and and the cowboys playing the houston team it's been a very long time since uh, that was a game that was hyped up over, right? That where which both teams were good. Even the the surprise win that the Texans got on their franchise opener, um, you know, no one expected it. So there wasn't like a lot of hype for that game necessarily. I can't think of a time in the Houston Texans organizational history uh, in which they were playing the Cowboys and this was really hyped up as two very good teams. I, I, I think that that game is suddenly going to be an exciting and fun game to watch. Whereas just as recently as a year ago, it would have been a snooze fest. Yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting. The Cowboys have multiple Monday night football games, multiple Thursday football games. Right. And then of course they're just bombarded with Sunday night football games. Yeah. Uh, one against the, the Steelers. Obviously they have, uh, another one against the 49ers late uh, or after the bye week. So uh, th- another thing I wanted to mention, they have a bye week before they play the 49ers. Yeah. I think that's good. I mean, ha- having a bye between the Lions and the 49er game is probably going to be very helpful. I think they need to at least split that, the, those yeah. two games. Uh, we'll see. I want to talk about the end of the season schedule for the Cowboys because we know in previous years, the Cowboys have struggled in December and January. How does their late season schedule look this year? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and in the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads money lines, player props, and more. And now that the NFL schedule is released, you can go look at the lines and the money lines for every single game on the NFL schedule. It's absolutely crazy. The Cowboys are only underdogs in like three games this year, which is pretty incredible. Go visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and check out all the NFL lines. And of course, the playoff lines in the NBA and in the NHL and make every playoff shot count. With FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Lot on Cowboys podcast. We are breaking down the Cowboys 2024 schedule. Lena, let's look at the last four games on the Cowboys schedule yeah. here. At Carolina, home Tampa on Sunday Night Football. Uh, at Philadelphia in a primetime spot. And then they finish up at home against Washington. How do you think those uh, final month of the season is going to play out for Dallas? It, it certainly could be worse, right? Like, I mean, getting at, getting Carolina on the road. I mean, I understand that you know they're they're probably going to be a little bit better than they were last year, but I, I don't know how much better. Um, you know, there is opportunity that you know maybe Bryce you know figures it out a little bit, and and suddenly you know you're uh, uh, he's he's starting to get on a roll, and by the end of the season, they're a different football team than w- what we're thinking about right now. But I, I, I that that's a still a pretty big. That'll be a home game, much like it was last year. I remember yeah, when the frankly, Cowboys played yeah. the Panthers, and they had seventy five percent Cowboy fans. That'll help. That's right. Uh, and then uh, the Tampa Bay game. I mean, Tampa is just kind of. <laughs> it's hard to know how Tampa is going to be right. Like yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting matchup to see exactly, you know, what's they're They're in such a weird transition right now. Right. They have like a whole group of older players that are still kind of hanging around from the Brady era. They're trying to inject some new folks into that group. 
but it feels like it's a team in transition. This is and even uh, especially at home. I feel like the Cowboys can can win that game. And then you've got the two divisions, uh, divisional games to finish the season, right? The the away game in Philly, which I think is going to be one of the tougher games you're going to play all season. Uh, and then a home game against Washington. And, and, and I think at this point, it's really tough for me to kind of wrap my head around exactly what, what Washington's going to be like, right? It, it's, it's, you're, you've got a brand new, you know, high draft pick quarterback. You've got a, a new coach, obviously with a defense scheme that we're extremely familiar with, but it's a, it's a transitional process for them. Right. Uh, and so I think that that game will be competitive. Uh, it's a divisional game. Um, but I, I don't know if it's going to be as competitive as, you know, suggest like, you know, the Eagles game, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I think overall, I feel like it's not, it's not that bad as far as a way to f- finish the season. You knew that it was likely going to get at least two divisional games. So for one of them to be at home against Washington, isn't so bad. Obviously the road game against the Eagles will be difficult, but outside of that game, that's the only one of those four that as we stand here right now, I look and say, yeah, that's going to be a difficult game. Yeah. I think the Washington game could be – it could be difficult, but it might also be you know, your run-of-the-mill Cowboys versus Commanders game. So we'll see. I, I think as long as the Cowboys are 7 or, and 6 or better coming out of the Bengals game, they'll be in the playoffs. Hmm. I mean, you have two of, the, two of the final four games are at home. Yeah. Let me rephrase that. Three of the final four games <laughs> are probably going to be at home with the Carolina run. And then it's going to feel like home games. It's right? going to feel yeah. like a home game, right? Mm-hmm. So as long as they are seven and six, I think they're going to go at least three and one in that stretch. Maybe they'll lose to Tampa Bay and they'll beat Philly, and or maybe they'll win the first three and the final game won't matter at all. Yeah. And maybe yeah. they already have things yeah. clinched. But I would think as long as they are seven and six or better coming out of that Monday night football game. Cowboys will be in the playoffs again this year. Yeah, I think that's that seems fair. You know, again, like it's a tough schedule. Like when you just breaking down the opponents, but like like the Cowboys got some some breaks here and there in the sequencing and the where where and when they're playing these teams. Um, and and I think that you know the the kind of unknowns here, uh, especially with 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 the good teams at the AFC North that you have to play, it's somewhat mitigated by the fact that you're playing them early in the season when things are still kind of you know, chaotic. So uh, yeah. a lot of things can break both positive and negative. So uh, yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, look, it's a difficult list of opponents as we mentioned, but as you got them arranged in about as good a way as you could probably yeah. hope for in a realistic NFL schedule. I think the key is to go, you need to go at least two and two in the AFC North. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe you, if you can beat Pittsburgh and you can beat the Bengals and you, you know, you lose the Browns in week one and you lose to the Ravens. Like I thought, I think you'll be fine. As long as they go two and two in the AFC North, I actually have no problems with the rest of the schedule. Now I think the AFC North might be the best division top to bottom. Maybe. Uh, all four of those teams had winning records last year. All four of those teams believe they have really good rosters. Yeah. We'll see how the quarterback play is. It was kind of up and down last year because of injuries uh, and stuff, but that's the key. Go two and two in the division, win at least seven games coming out of that game against the Bengals. And I think this team will be just fine. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. Go check out the YouTube channel. We post videos every day on there as well. Download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.